We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and today's stop is Dillon, Montana, as we visit with Ryan Norris, who is the head football coach at Montana Western, the Bulldogs leader for eight seasons now, and, uh, well, 10 overall in your stints, two stints with the program. Coach, seven and four last year. Let's go ahead and start right there. You won your final four games of the season, actually got a little bit of uh, a vengeance there, making up for a couple of, of games that you had lost earlier in the season. It was that stretch right there, midway through 2022 that kind of got you last year but you do have a winning season overall talk about last year yeah it was a little disappointing you know we were um hoping that we we wouldn't have one of those lulls in in the middle we've we've been with that crew we've been plagued with that a little bit over the over the years and, and uh last year um especially disappointing because we did have a talented football team that I, I think you just in that stretch there underperformed and we played really good teams but you know it's um not teams that as we showed at the end of the year that we weren't capable of, of being able to compete well against and and pull out um victories against uh but but overall you know we had great performances again and and uh you know by some very familiar names and faces uh so bittersweet season i'm gonna miss a lot of those guys but um i i feel like you know one a, a good learning opportunity for the guys coming back uh in a how not to fashion in the middle and then a great learning opportunity and in being a finisher and and making sure that you know you you leave somewhere better than what you found it now, definitely momentum coming into the 23 campaign. You lose uh, so many players on offense, but you return a lot from defense last year. So let's go ahead and start on the defensive side of the ball. Top seven tacklers from last season's team come back and, and a number of other players, uh, Reese Arts, uh, Tanner Harrell, a couple of all-conference performers for you, and, and senior linebackers the, at the top of the tackle list in Cameron Rouser and Braden Smith. Take us through your defense. Yeah, we're very confident in our in our defense. We have a lot of guys who've um, who've played a, a lot of of football, you know. And I and I think you know we have three guys who've performed at a really high level in the Frontier Conference, and Reese Arts and Tanner Harrell on the defensive line, who are also team captains, and then uh, you know Braden Swank at at corner, and uh, you know both last year Cameron Rouser and. Braden Smith, that was their first year starting at linebacker for us. And, and, you know, they improved consistently all the way through the season. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, I think we'll lean on that side of the ball a little bit in terms of, of some, some leadership and guys who've been in the fray and, and who've, um, who've produced really high, but then also had some learning opportunities along the way so uh, you know and then our whole d-line just that whole front I, I believe we've got um four five seniors that have been rotating and playing for years so a, a lot of um dedication commitment and experience out of that group you mentioned Braden Swank, and I wanted to, to drop his name as well, junior defensive back coming into this year. And, and a number that stood out to me had 19 pass breakups. Uh, it's a pretty solid number in and of itself, but it's amazing they keep throwing his direction. Yeah, that's uh, Braden's been a, a great player. You know, he's improved from his, his freshman year to his sophomore year greatly, and I think was playing his best football at the end of the season last year. So, yeah, we will um, lean on Braden quite quite a bit. You know, he's a high end competitor, and and uh, you know, he's a guy we put in a lot of man to man situations, and he's very capable of it. So, um, yeah, you know, I guess we were pretty solid out there, and and uh, um, you know, Braden a lot of times was on their best guy in man to man situations, and and uh, to the field oftentimes. So, yeah, they went at him, and and he, he performed well. So hopefully next year he can increase that and and you know have potential to be an all-conference player in the frontier which is a big challenge but i think something he's capable of we're speaking now with coach ryan norse for montana western the bulldogs coming into the 2023 season here as we're previewing the college football season on midwest sports net i encourage you please subscribe to the channel we talk about small college sports and more throughout the midwest and beyond summer officially started yesterday and for many parts of the country 
Uh, it's pretty warm, not uh, unlike where it is right here from where I am broadcasting right now. However, in Dillon, Montana, it's a little bit cooler right now, Coach, and, and so I'm sure summer is nice for you all. Tell us uh, about your spring just a little bit as we start to look at the offense. Yeah, you know, we really never had a spring, so we're getting a little bit of spring right now. Um, and uh, it, it's winter started in mid-October, and it, it never really stopped until um, – yeah, really last month, maybe. Uh, so we're, we're kind of receiving uh, some spring weather here in June and and uh, looking forward to the start of summer. So it's been a very um, uncharacteristic weather year for us. Uh, so the spring was um, as it was for all the teams in in Montana out here. It was very it was very challenging. You know, us guys who don't have turf yet have um, an extra challenge. You know, when you when you plow dirt it turns to mud you know you only get one growing season in montana so um we we had some slick fields and some challenging weather but we did get a lot out of our spring our spring season so to speak our second winter season and uh um we're excited to uh move into this you know next set and hopefully get some good summer weather coming for a little vacation in july right Exactly. Well, and, and that's why I ask about that, too, because I, I wonder what you're able to see from the spring, because there were so many players that were key parts of your offense last season that graduated. They moved on. And, and so you're going to be able to uh, see a lot of new faces. Folks who are following the program are going to be getting used to some new names. Now, a couple of come back. Colton McPhee, junior running back, coming back, as well as Isaiah Thomas, uh, receiver for you, who uh, came along as the season went on as well. Tell us a little bit about who we may see on the offensive side. Yeah, there'll be lots of new names. You know, we we were um, you know super fortunate. You know, John John was a four year starter at at quarterback, an outstanding competitor and and uh, player of the year. You know, he was he was just awesome. Uh, helped us build our program to to the next step of where we we were you know wanting and, and desiring to go. And Noah Danielson, another four year starter at. Uh, on the offensive line and Reese Neville, you know, two year first team all conference kayak running back, you know, we, the year before we'd lost Nate Simpkins and then, you know, this last year, Trey mounts at wide receivers. So, yeah. And maybe we know one of our hidden gems, you know, Nate Masterson, our, our tight end, you know, I don't hear it, hear anything from him because we don't throw him the ball very, very often, but um, such a huge part of our, our run game and, and uh, great leadership. So yes, we lose a lot of of guys, which uh, is again, it's sad because I love those guys, and we spent a lot of years together. You know, an extra year with COVID for all those guys, but uh, it's also exciting. You know, we have so many good football players in the wings who have been working hard and developing, and and are are, are ready for their opportunity to uh, to arise. So uh, yeah, you know, in the spring we we got done what we needed to in terms of that preparation and evaluation of a lot of those guys. There were some things we would have liked to had better footing for just in terms of not so much in terms of evaluation, but training and helping those guys get, get ready with a little bit of uh, extra work. But um, yeah, we were, we were really pleased, you know, we returned four guys who started on the old line for us last year uh you know sam patosny will be a senior and then marcus lombard who's been a two-year starter will be a junior and rocco bakari a two-year starter will be a junior and um keith kippenhan who, who started for the first time last year and he'll be a junior so i think in the important area we we return some guys who are are pretty battle tested there um and you know we returned dylan shipley who was a starter for us as a true freshman wide receiver last year but got hurt in the middle of the season you know and dylan was um super productive and explosive there those first five games so we've got some guys who've played before um and thankfully some guys in that battery who've played a lot coach competition for that spot that john filled for uh, so many years How, how's that look there at that position you know we were really Please, I mean, we were much more pleased with that position than not to say we were surprised, but just uh, um, pleasantly pleased with that position and, and how those guys competed and performed in 
this spring. You know, we have a, a transfer from Weber State, uh, Caden Jinks, who who played there um, for a few years. You know, who's an older guy and and has uh, big sky football experience and real football intelligent guy. You know, him being in our room, that level of competition with uh, Michael Palandre, who's a red shirt, going to be a red shirt sophomore, who is John's backup. Last year, you know, those two really rose to the top and had a really strong uh, competition through the spring and both bring in a lot of intangibles that are a little bit different than than John's. You know, we're going to look a little bit different. We, we have quarterbacks on our roster now, you know, those two in particular who, you know, John was so explosive and such a great runner, you know, his his first inkling was to use that uh, athleticism and toughness as his um, kind of adjust mode um, as a quarterback where these two guys, their their first inkling is to, to move and look to throw. So it was a little bit different in that area, but it was also good because we're going to be very young at wide receiver, but very deep. So it was, was good to see the ability of our guys to work through concepts and work through um, scramble drill and some, some items where, you know, in the past, maybe we turned to block a little bit quicker. We're now we're, you know, we're, we're more apt to throw the ball in those situations. So a little bit different. So a little bit different from me as well and calling plays and our offensive staff in preparation. So that challenge has been really fun too. Coach, from a look at your special teams, Eddie Dewart coming back, John Mears coming back, uh, Isaiah Thomas had some time uh, returning the ball for you as well. Uh, tell us through or take us through your special teams and what they may look like in 23. I feel really good. We're, we've got a big jump on our special teams, I, I believe, just because we have a um, quality punter and a quality kicker already in. I think both of those guys are – all conference caliber players. And, you know, Eddie was a true freshman last year and John in his um, sophomore season, you know, they were right there at the top of the league and in their categories. So, um, and they had incredible off seasons, you know, all our specialists um, were our lights out in the weight room and then just have a high competitive character and, and really improve. So uh, that, that's an area that um, I don't, we don't overlook, but um, we're, we're kind of excited to not, to not have many worries in terms of whose foot's going on the ball. We had great snappers. So I'd say as terms of our specialists, uh, as good as we've been, as good as we've started in a lot of years going into August and and we're really uh, pleased with what we saw in terms of just the the depth of our team and what our special teams units are going to look like out there. We got high competition of a lot of athletes uh, who um, who are fast and physical and they just love playing football. So we feel really good going into August. As I've said, you know the best we felt in several years. The season gets underway September 2nd then, and your schedule is bookended by Eastern Oregon. You travel to Eastern Oregon on September 2nd. You close out the season November 11th, Senior Day, and you, you get the Mountaineers at home there. But it's only it's the only duplication on the schedule this year. The Frontier Conference is growing, and, um, and among those teams, the, the new team in the league, Arizona Christian, you travel to ACU as a part of the schedule this year. So tell us a little bit about uh, 2023. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I like the schedule, um, you know, that playing somebody twice in the game of football is, is, is I believe, and I, anybody who's ever had to do it, um, knows it's gotta be one of the hardest things to do in, in football. And, and then out here, especially, I mean, the, the consistency and continuity of coaching staffs and, and that, you know, you get to know each other pretty darn well. So that, that second game becomes a, just a really physical, tough football game, you know, and, and regardless of, of records um, and, and not an excuse, just, it's just reality. And um, to, to play everybody once is, is going to be kind of fun. It's not something we've done a lot. So um, we're excited to have Arizona Christian. And again, it's a place I don't know a ton about, you know, as being a Raider, um, years ago, I, I, you know, so I, I'd had some experience with them and, and um, you know, we've we've played some sooner teams. So 
there, there's a little bit of familiarity, but we really won't know much until we get to see some more video, but excited to go down there and, and play those guys and see what they're doing and, you know, just play an, another team from another part of, of the country. I think it's good for the NAI as well. It helps out in terms of ratings and, and seeing where teams stand and what teams look like versus, you know, schools um, outside of regions. Well, Coach, we look forward to following you all this season. Again, September 2nd, the schedule with uh, the Bulldogs traveling to Eastern Oregon Frontier Conference, always a challenging conference, and we're going to follow you all this season. Success to the Bulldogs this year. Coach Ryan Norris, thank you so much, sir, for taking Yeah, time. thanks for uh, taking the time and having me on today.